What's going on, Axie fam? Elijah here back with another video, and I've got one I'm very excited about. We're nearing the end of the season. Things are getting very heated, and I thought it'd be a good time to maybe help you with that final push. Joining me today is fellow Meditate pro player 1437. Thanks for being on the channel again. It's always great to be here and uh, share our knowledge. I mean, how's your climb going? You're in the top 10 right now. It's pretty good, right? Yep. Two, uh, two and a half days pretty much left. We'll see where it takes me on the final day. That's awesome. So Theban uses a bunch of different teams in the top 100. He's crazy. He'll switch on the spot. Me, I'm more of a figure out what I'm going to push with and then just go, you know, as hard as I can. I'm around 300 now. So I've got a couple days left to push. And what we're going to do now is share with you some core teams that we think are really useful if you're struggling and just want to get to that next stage in your progression. This is probably the last V2 season we're going to have. So don't go crazy on buying axes, but a lot of these are relatively affordable. They will carry value into origin. And yeah, so let's jump right into it. First, I think we have to talk about reflectiles, right? Like yeah. we all kind of hate them, but we hate them because they're insanely <laughs> strong, right? I don't yeah. use them. Theban doesn't, but let's get into a really good reflectile build so that if you're trying to go from like 1200 MMR to top 1000, this is your cheat key right here. You know, you just get this boom, you're going to ascend and smash everything along the way for the most part. So why don't you just give me your thoughts on this build before we get into it? This entire season has pretty much revolved around this one axie. It's yeah. whether you're either countering it or you're playing something that counters this axie essentially, because it has such a polarizing matchup against Aquas and even against Beast or Mechs in the back you can still win because you're reflecting back the damage that they're dealing to you. Hence the name Reflectile. Uh, the most important part of this Axie is to make sure that it's as slow as it can possibly be. So you want that 39 speed. This is perfect right here with two uh, plant parts. I can't believe how cheap it is for yeah. such an incredibly powerful Axie. Yeah, that's right. So this is the best version you can get. You might see earlier, there were some cheaper ones with bug eyes, like one bug eye and one plant ear, something like that, which is still viable if you're trying to save a buck or two, right? But if you want to go for the best version, then this is it. Now we're going to make this simple for you. What can you pair it with? Well, why not one of the most classic axes in the game for the past mm -hmm. few seasons, the Aqua Midliner, Piranha, Scarab, Arco, Nemo. You see this everywhere in the top 1000 you also see it with a mech at the midline with a steel like rice and high damage but theban and i both prefer this mm -hmm. aqua more versatile faster make sure that you're covered on energy with nemo so this is our top pick to pair with a reflectile and lastly let's cover the front liners before moving on for this comp you can actually use the dusk up front that has a lot of benefits in being faster than a normal plant. It's got big damage in Caterpillar, less health, but that's one of the reasons you can get away with it is, is because it goes before like a lot of other frontliners. And so bugs. the re and bugs as well, right? Exactly. And that's the thing is you get to slap the mama sandal on them, right? You can definitely make that happen. So this Axie here, we only recommend it with the Reflectile and Aqua build. And the reason why is that if you face other Reflectiles, they're going to get Kataro value from your midline anyway, right? Because it's going to be faster than them. So because of that, you might as well just go with the fancier front line here uh, that's 40 speed. And then mm -hmm. for every other build we cover today, it's going to center around this frontline plant, Theban. You have a couple words. I mean, it's about as classic as it gets. Yeah. I mean, it's got everything. Uh, you got the beach as well for the bonus damage that you can get because you're being a plant as well. Uh, very tanky Axie in general. It does everything like it, this. This Axie can pretty much fit in any single comp. It, any comp. it doesn't matter. Uh, it yeah. can't get Kotaro either. Uh, one of the things that I like in terms of the Aqua as well over the beast that we might have uh, not got to cover is that you're going to win mirror matchups against other reflectiles because mm. you have the aqua and they're going to have a mech or a beast. Yeah, the there you have it. That's our starting point. We think this is perfect. If you've never had a top 1000 finish and you're trying to get there, it's probably the easiest way to attempt to do it. Now we need to address how to beat this because it's so obnoxiously popular that like once you hit a certain point, I mean, I think probably once you get to top 5,000, 10,000, you start seeing these. And then when you're in top 1,000, this is mm -hmm. all you're going to see from about 1K 
to maybe two or 300, it starts to yeah. shift. So if you're progressing and you don't want to be just another reflectile user, well, what do you do? Our first choice is going to be a double plant bird build where we go back to the go to plant up front. We have a hot soon plant at the midline. Definitely one of the more expensive axes you're going to see on the market right now. And the reason for that is because of how good it does against reflectiles. So they're certainly in uh, high demand to kind of hard counter that. And then on the back, you're going to want a last one bird with egg and peace treaty. Okay. This is just going to be heaps of damage against any aquas or, or aqua bird compositions you face. You're going to tear through those once you get through their plant. And obviously the egg is what's going to allow you to outplay your opponent and draw them away in bad matchups so that your midline plant can get the job done specifically against something like a reflectile. Reflectile is one of the comps that you can beat with it. The general idea is to get through their first two axes. Reflectiles like to wait till round five when they want to start activating their abilities. And because you're playing a double plant build, they also can't get good value from their Kataro earlier mm -hmm. in the game. So they're very restricted with what they can do. Then you're going to want to play the Hatsune, stop the scaly spoon from coming mm -hmm. out the following turn and that's when you can go in with the bird safely do a lot of damage to it in general you want to have this turn where you're just shielding up with the bidens and the hot soon yeah. and storing up some energy and just blowing up the uh reflectile with using egg and then cactuses to follow through yeah that's actually a great point that I'm, i might have overlooked just now so what he's saying is and, and guys take note of this there's gonna be a lot of rounds where you're heading into that late game and you've got this reflectile like staring you down Steven actually corrected me by saying don't necessarily always egg there keep your bird alive and prolong the game make him waste four cards into your plant and just play like single hot soon double biden's turn off his foreign card next round you can potentially heal up with mosquito as steven said you're safe to blast off with your bird but i think it's key there that you prolong the bird's life and then you'll have like a huge flurry to finish the game but no doubt this is an extremely strong build to help you get through the reflectile. It also does really well against double aquas, which is a very really popular good. build. And really I, that's why this is probably for me, when I was struggling in the around 1,500 range for a week or so, uh, a few weeks back, this is the build that I actually played to uh, get myself into the top 100 safely. Elijah, I think this is a good time for us to mention a little bit about the top 100 because we were just- Yeah, about I'd it. love to. Yeah, I, I just want to say that there's a lot of people out there who tend to look at the leaderboards and the axes that the players are using. Uh, being someone in the top 10 for the past week, I will say that the metagame there is a lot more different than the metagame that you see in the 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 range. So as you're climbing up, it's constantly changing. And there's a lot of variety right now with players having plenty of really strong teams. It doesn't make a lot of sense for you to go out and copy the build of somebody in the top 10 because they're probably playing that team for another reason yeah, in their little bubble. Yeah, and they're playing com against completely different comps. Like Reflectile starts to disappear, which is why you'll see a lot of double aquas at the top. But you can't play double aqua if you're trying to go past like, you know, the top 2000 range because reflectile automatically wins versus it. And we're going to move on to our third and final comp, which is double backdoor compositions. And we're going to give two examples of ways that you can approach this. Mm -hmm. Example one, something you're all probably super familiar with because Spam and Rice popularized this last season. And that is simply the reptile with winghorn at the midline and grass snake the backdoor mech with twin tail and Arco. And up front, we think it's fine to go with a very classic plant here with Yam, Leafbug, Sirius, and Pumpkin. And we're not gonna spend too much time on this one, but maybe you can give them the really quick like breakdown or tips for how to play this and why it's good as you try to climb up the ranks. Yeah, I mean, one of the strengths of this team is that poison is something reflectiles really struggle against. They don't really wanna attack uh, into that yam or if they do have an aqua in the middle it, they have to use that to get through your plant so the yam is going to have a lot of effect then you got the back door now reflectiles don't have really good abilities that they can just chalk out for shield uh, they need like perfectly timed those things so it's a really tough matchup and finally this is the definitely the higher tier option of a double backdoor build this is a top 100 caliber team but it's not the easiest to play it seems like it would be because you're just thinking oh double backdoor kill whatever's on the back line then kill whatever's on the midline 
But to actually execute, you need to be patient. You need to stock up your combos. But if you're up for the task or you're familiar with backdoor teams, then this is about as good as you can get in terms of high meta builds right now. And that's the Shrimp Aqua with the mech and it has a uh, dual blade this time instead of arco because you need max damage with this variation because we're no longer going to use the yam plant but rather go to a leaf bug cattail serious and you can either do this with watering can or pumpkin and so for this build you need the extra energy boost up front just to make sure that you can pull off all your attacks this aqua has no zero cost and so that's the reasoning for it but theban take it away on why this is so strong right so this build it might look really awkward with the way that you know the damage distribution is the plant doesn't do a whole lot but the idea is very simple you want to kill their first back to axes and leave the plant alive because this backline mech has a lot of damage in this situation the opponent always is stressed that their backliner is going to be either dying or taking a lot of damage so they're going to start chucking out cards constantly and this is where you want to be patient patient the front line plant is very tanky and it can delay the game you have serious you have leaf bug you have ways to generate a lot of energy as well even against double aqua builds that might be probably the most tough in matchup toughest matchup but you still have a chance if they use too many of their aqua cards now on all the other matchups it's going to be a lot easier especially on the climb up when you play against double bugs mm. super easy you just got to mm -hmm. kill off the uh, aqua and the game pretty much plays itself out you play against plants same thing kill off the bird you have two back doors to go to that bird first and then the mech can bring it home for you exactly and remember guys even if your plant goes under fire you know sometimes like he said be patient let them waste cards on the back line occasionally you know uh you can go through the front too if like maybe they have like a backline plant where your mech has a good matchup anyway i don't think you ever get to go through the front against a reflectile i've tried it and by the time you get there you just get wrecked still if that thing's alive with its kataros and its reflect damage so you do need to snap that off the other good thing is that you can go to the axis zone leaderboard and actually watch game of people who play this build one of them in particular is a meditate teammate of mine of ours i should say and that's lightest and he has just been killing it with this comp all season long notice how his aqua actually has bird eyes as well so this is something that you can consider doing instead of having all aqua parts maybe go with like a single bird eye on your midliner which gives it lower hp slightly which means you're going to be faster than like any pure aquas you face which is actually a big deal if you want to get really bougie you could try bird eyes and bird ears now you're more vulnerable, but you're guaranteed to go first pretty much against other shrimp aquas, which is crazy. A word of caution here. This is not a very easy team to play. No, it's uh, not. You're gonna, this is on, on the expert level. This is very, very high up there because it's not only about just waiting for your combos and throwing it out. There's going to be situations where you're going to need to make hard passes when you already even have your combo because you need to draw a little bit more cards on those axes or other situations, yeah. especially if you're trying to get into the top 100 yeah. with this team. Yeah, and you need to know your calculations. You need to know when to just play like a single toothless and one twin tail or two twin tails, something like that to get that final kill on an axe. You can't really overkill axes with this build because you'll run out of resources so yeah in wrapping up this video first of all i just want to say thank you to everyone who supported the channel because v2 has been an amazing journey i don't know if it's for sure over after this but it kind of feels like this is the final season and on that note don't go crazy with buying axes you know we're right around the corner from being finished this is just if you want to try to excel on this final season you're looking for some advice Hopefully this provided you with some answers. So Theban, any final thoughts before we sign off? Well, a few more days left, you know, let it all out and uh, happy climbing. That's it. All right. We'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.